What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with a how to maintain your RC helicopter. So we have a couple models on the table and a couple models we're going to go over. So go ahead, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's so get first, started. Go over a couple different everyday tools that you are going to use while building and working on your RC helicopter. A good pair of sharp little side bites little pair of needle nose, another little pair of side bites, another little pair of regular needle nose pliers. You got long shorts, a set of ball link tools. This is a must have for anybody with helicopters. And of course, a good set of drivers. I always get asked what drivers do I use or do I recommend? MIP drivers, hands down, best drivers you can get on the market. Get a good set of drivers. Now we need to go over what greases are we gonna use for just regular maintenance and building. So three-in-one silicone oil. This is great stuff. I use it on all the rubber things for like your canopy grommets, anything like that. You put a drop there. You can use it on your bearings on the inside, get some drops there. Very good stuff to have, three-in-one silicone oil. My favorite, MicroLube GL261, some flywheel bearing lubricant, and this is some synthetic Aquacraft boat grease. And this works great for thrust bearings as well. So now let's go ahead, get the table cleared off, and let's get started on our first thing, which is doing our so tail The first belt. and most important thing we need to do is visually inspect the helicopter. So I have my SAB RAW 580 here on the table. And we're going to start at the top, and we're going to work our way down. So now I'm going to go ahead, grab my blades, pull them in and out. Grab the next one, which is harder to do on camera. I want to shake the blade up and down, make sure there's no excessive play, make sure there's nothing looking loose, make sure our blade grit bolts are tightened and all the way in, nice and flush, make sure our blades are tight. And then we're going to start working our way down to our links. Go ahead, give them a push, make sure they don't just pop off super easily. And then we're going to go ahead, do the same on our swash plate. Just go ahead, check all your linkages. And then visually inspect every screw on the helicopter. Start making sure that no screws have backed out. Nothing came loose. Check your servos. Check for excessive slop in the gear sets. Go ahead and make sure that there's no slop in them. Again, check these linkages. Make sure they're not wearing out, getting loose. Okay, make sure that everything is still nice and smooth. No grittiness is in the servo. No excessive tightness on the swash plate. Now this model has just been recently done. So you can see we have some grease on our main shaft. So that's greased up. We put some oil, which we're gonna go over. Just go ahead and start checking every screw. Look at our belt tensioner. Go ahead, feel our belt. Make sure our belt feels good, which we're gonna go over in a second. Just visually inspect the helicopter front to back. Same with the tail unit. Go ahead, come through your tail. Make sure there's no excessive slop, no play in everything. Go ahead, check everything. Make sure nothing is backing out, nothing is loose. Make sure our tail push rod is still good. There's no wear on it, linkages. So just visually so now the first thing we are going to do in maintaining our helicopter here. This is a helicopter I got, a Goblin 700. Don't know the history. I don't know how old it is. I don't know how anything is. I don't know how old this belt is. So one thing I always do, take a little bit of your silicone oil. This is a three-in-one silicone. It can be any kind of silicone. And I'm taking to take a Q-tip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to douse this Q-tip in the 3-in-1 silicone. And then I'm going to rest the Q-tip on my tail belt here. And I'm going to rotate the main rotor. I'm just going to kind of walk it back and forth here. Keep an eye on the belt. We can kind of see that it's getting a little bit dry. So just keep going around, kind of rotate it to the side. Get that oil all the way around so now you can see the color difference in the belt but you can see it's still a little bit dry so go ahead some more oil put a couple drops on the belt and continue to spin it rotate your q-tip if need be kind of walk it back to forth now we should have a good covered belt that you can see the difference now that silicone will absorb into the belt and dry now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do it on the inside of the belt. So we're gonna go ahead, douse our Q-tip in silicone oil again, and we're going to hold it on the inside, let it touch and rotate it again. Get it good and oiled up. 
Now our belt is silicone and that will prolong the life of your tail belt, allow it to last forever. I have belts that are over 10 years old. Let that go ahead and dry. Now we have our motor belt, the same thing. We're gonna take another Q-tip. We're gonna take our three-in-one silicone oil. We're gonna go ahead and douse this Q-tip, get it good and wet. And then we're just going to hold our Q-tip on our belt. And we'll start at the top, kind of work its way down, keep working our way down. Let that belt get good and saturated. Now on this, it's gonna be hard to do the inside, but we might be able to come in from the backside here and do the inside. Now we're just gonna go ahead. Yeah, there we go, we got it on the inside. So now our motor belt is silicone oiled. Our tail belt is silicone oil. Now we're gonna start going through the helicopter with our silicone oil and go through all of our bearings. So the first thing we're gonna go after is our tail bearing right here. So we're just gonna put a dab of oil on that, kind of work it. We're gonna drop a dab inside of this little pulley here, spin it, and then we're gonna work our way around. Now we have our main bearings here. I like to take a little bit of silicone oil, put a couple drops into the main bearings here of the block. Go ahead, give that a spin, put a little bit more into that block, Go ahead, give that a spin, and then you continuously do it. Now we're gonna come back to our swash plate bearing, which is right here in the middle. And we're just going to put a dab of oil onto that. Same thing, rotate it, put a dab onto that, and then kind of just manually move the swash plate around. And once we're happy with that, you notice that our main shaft has no grease or nothing on it. It is a dry main shaft. So we're gonna push our swash plate all the way down. And you will also notice that we don't have any pinch bolts on this model. That is one thing I noticed after I bought it. So we have to replace pinch bolts. I'm gonna take my micro lube GL261 and I'm going to put a tiny dab on my finger. And then I'm just going to hold my finger here and rub this micro lube all around the shaft the best I can get it. You can pull the head block off if you want to be good at it, which I'm gonna do anyways. Now we have that on the top. We're gonna go ahead and rotate up, pull our swash up, tiny bit of micro lube again on our finger, and then same thing. The bottom's easier to get to. Go ahead, get your finger all up inside that, rub it down nice and perfect. So now our main shaft is greased up. Carefully move your swash up and down. So now our head is greased up, our main shaft is greased now up. Now we're gonna move on to greasing our tail shaft. Again, there is no oil. I recommend doing this or any grease either. I recommend doing this every probably 50 flights or so. So first thing we're gonna do is take our silicone oil and we are going to put a dab into this bearing right here. Then we're gonna put a dab onto these bearings right here. Then we're gonna go ahead and spin this, work that oil in, carefully rotate your tail, work that in there. So now we're gonna take our micro lube and you can also put oil into these bearings as well if you feel like you need it. It's always a good thing to do. So now we're gonna take our micro lube and we're going to wipe it on this shaft. Try to get this shaft covered as good as we can. Get it into that bearing there. Go ahead, carefully rotate. And then try to get it as best as you can into here. Wipe off any of the excess. Kind of go back and forth. Now our tail is oiled and smooth as it should be. Our belt is oiled and it's going to last forever. Now for helicopters that have canopy grommets, if you ever notice, they can be very difficult to push on and off. So we're gonna come back with our Q-tip and our silicone oil. And again, I do this every time I grease and oil up the helicopters and we're gonna come on to the inside of the grommet and we're just gonna dose that grommet, or douse that grommet in some silicone oil. And then we're gonna take the helicopter part, the main frame of the helicopter. We're gonna do the same on the canopy post. We're just gonna put a little bit of oil on both sides of the canopy posts here. And then now when you go to slide your canopy on, you will see how much easier it is to put your canopy on and off with the grommets with just a little bit of silicone oil. It makes a huge difference and it keeps the grommets, look how simple that is. It slides, if I can ever find the grommet, look at, look at that, slides right on, barely touching. When you go to take it off, same thing, pulls right off.
and then your grommets last a very long time without it's tearing. It's also important on your push rod guides on helicopters that have a tail push rod guide. I take a little bit of micro lube, and I mean just a little bit, and I push the rudder all the way over. You can see where on the guide here. So I just take my micro lube, and I just put a little bit on the guide, or on the, the push rod, and then it goes back and forth in the guide, and it makes it very smooth and no binding or wearing at the actual tail so push now rod. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this flywheel grease, and this is SAB, but you can use it on any one-way bearing. And this stuff is made for one-way bearings. So now this is a brand new main gear in one way off of a Goblin 380, but this is just to show you guys what I do about every 100 flights. I will pull the main gear assembly out of the helicopter to get to the one way. You can take the one way fully out, but you don't need to. So what I like to do is I like to take a bit of this one way bearing grease and I will, running low on this stuff, but I will just push it into here get a little dab and in, dab into there so now i'm going to take a toothpick and i like to go ahead and just work it around push it push it down into that bearing into that one way go ahead spin it around turn the gear over do the same from the back side push that grease into each little crevice of that bearing spin it if you can hold it from the back side while you spin so that way it gets all the way inside of there and then now your one way is continuously greased and it will last a very long time. And any excess you can just pull out and wipe away. And that goes for any one way bearing on any helicopter. Now here's something else that I like to do every 150 to 100 flights. I like to inspect my blades. Now these are a set of Goose Guy blades off the RS4. I also have a set of SAB 700 blades here. I just like to go through the blade and really fine tooth home the blade from front to back so basically what i look for is any kind of cracking spider webbing any damage that might have happened from a blade strike or you tipped the helicopter over on landing so you just go through your blade look at the very root of the blade make sure there is no cracking stress fractures from over speeds make sure you don't see nothing happening around the bolt hole go through the top section of the blade Go through and make sure your blade's not delaminating and coming apart. And then you'll see like right here, I have a little nick, but that was a manufacturing defect. There's nothing wrong with the actual blade. So go through your blades. That can save a helicopter from exploding. Do the same with 700 blades. Go through them, make sure that you don't see any damage. Look at them under a bright light and kind of wave them back and forth. You can see if there's any cracking or damage in them. So just go all the way through again look and make sure that there's nothing separating they're not delaminating now these blades are very dirty but they are in really good condition now i always recommend if you have a blade strike or you hit the blades a boom whatever i don't ever recommend reusing the blade now if the blade is 100 perfect then yes you can go ahead but it's always a good because this is what keeps a helicopter in the air and especially with a 700 size machine is a lot different than a little tiny 380 size machine. So always go through and make sure your blades are in very good condition. Another very important thing to look at. Every 100 flights, I recommend you tear the helicopter down. Tear the head apart, feathering shaft, main shaft, bearings out of it, everything. Go through and look at your feathering shaft where it rides on the bearings. And you'll see this is an old feathering shaft. This shaft is no good. But... You'll see where there is marks into the actual feathering shaft here. That is from a bearings, both bearings being locked up and the shaft turning inside the bearing. So that it was actually eating the shaft up and you can feel a tiny little indentation here with your fingernail on both sides. That is usually caused by using too much Loctite or some kind of grease that hardens up. And what I mean by that is if you look at these thrust bearings here, See that yellowish orange stuff? This one doesn't have it. This one's more yellow. That is Loctite. That is that orange Loctite. Not so much on this one, but this one. These were locked up solid. The main bearings, thrust bearings, they were glued together and locked solid. So this is something to be very careful and check for. And they also wear after a while. So every 100 flights, SAB recommends it. And I recommend you do it on every manufacturer helicopter. Tear the head apart. Check your shafts. Check your thrust bearings, your main bearings, 
Also, go ahead and replace your head O-rings. If you have O-rings in the head, replace those. If you just have regular dampeners, go ahead and replace those. This one got tore up, again, from the bearing locked up, and it kept being flown. So very important, go through and check all of your shafts and replace them every 100 flights. If you're tearing the helicopter down after a crash or an inspection or something or that 100 flight mark, go through and check all your bearings. These are blade grip bearings. So go ahead, you can grab them. You can feel how smooth, these are brand new bearings, so they better be smooth. I lost one. And check them. If there's any grit to them, go ahead and replace them. The thing to have is a metric screw set. So now this is what I have, and I have multiple different sizes and multiple containers from two millimeter all the way up to six millimeter, different sizes and so on. And the reason this is good because when you're doing maintenance on your helicopter and you notice like on this one that both pinch bolts were missing. Now I think the person just didn't put them in, but stuff can vibrate out. So you wanna to fly tomorrow, you can go ahead and just like I did, grab some three millimeter by 30 millimeter screws or 20 millimeter screws and Loctite, now I can get my helicopter flying again without worrying or ordering screws. So it is very good and handy to have a full little screw set, nuts, washers, everything like Something that. Something else I wanted to go over. Always check your blades when they're bolted in. So if you fly, you tighten your blades up and you go fly. You see how loose these are? Now this was the maiden flight on this helicopter today but I'm gonna tighten them back up. But if every time you fly, or every two times, three times, your blades get loose, go ahead and replace the actual knock lock nuts on the bottom of your blade. What happens, especially if you start pulling your blades in and out a lot, the lock nut quits doing its job and locking. So go ahead, tighten them up, do a flight. If they come loose again after a flight or two, then replace that nut and your blades will stop coming loose on their own. Also make sure, and this applies to your tail blades as well, make sure that your bolt goes clear through your lock nut, and that allows it to do its job and actually be locking, but if your blade does not go clear through your lock nut, you're gonna need a longer bolt. One another tip is to make sure that your connections to your fly barless unit are nice and secured. So you guys already know, I like to use this fabric paint, you pick it up on Amazon, and it holds my wires perfectly. But just go ahead and check them every once in a while when you're doing your regular helicopter maintenance, give them a nice tug, pull, make sure they're not loose or wiggling. Same with your satellite or your receiver connection. Make sure it's plugged in like it should be. And then just go through your helicopter from front to back and make sure everything is the way it is. Check all your bolts. Make sure everything looks good. It doesn't look wrong or out of place. And go through and just check and you will have a perfectly flying Regardless model. of the helicopter, the make, model, size, threat drive, the one way, doesn't matter. Small little guys your maintenance is going to be the same. So you're gonna constantly just wanna check the helicopter over. This is my new mini Comet. It's the first time you guys are seeing it. I need the ball links, but you're gonna go through and just check every helicopter over. If it's a three blade, a two blade, a big helicopter, older one, newer one, doesn't matter, check them out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tip video and maintenance that I know a lot of you have asked me about. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Remember, Patreon and PayPal are linked in the description below if you wanna help me out. Take care and have a great day.